All right, welcome to my first gym vlog breakdown. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through one of my push days, push day B. Uh, it's actually chest, shoulders, and biceps, but push day is just easier. I wanted to do a mic'd up Sam Sulek style, but I go to a busy, small, in a Melbourne commercial gym. And as we're gonna see in the videos, I'm already a bit of a nuisance at the gym. So I thought micing up and talking to myself just was a step too far and I wasn't quite there yet. Um, unfortunately, there's no like, like bodybuilder, like warehouse gyms in the area. I'm pretty sure I don't really want to be traveling, like driving like 30 minutes to get to a gym. So I'm just going to make do with what we, what I have. All right, let's get into it. So we start the workout with a machine incline press. Um, I was doing dumbbells for probably a good two and a half years. Um, but it eventually got to the point where it was taking so long to like set up and do the exercises and I was spending so much time you know just getting the dumbbells up um, and then like stabilizing throughout the exercise that I'd spend 25 minutes and I'd gas myself out so much that like the rest of my workout was almost like completely useless um, especially considering like especially after I changed from kind of like in working in like the 10 to 12 to 15 rep range down to the like five to eight um, it just was, it was too much. I just couldn't, couldn't quite, uh, couldn't quite co cope with it for the rest of the session. Um, so we're on a hammer strength incline press. We've got the seat set up to about, um, the second or third notch. Uh, last time for the first set, I did six and a half at 75 kilos total. Uh, we warmed up today with four at 25 on each side. Um, essentially my mentality is just try to beat what I did last time. So, we can see here we're explosive up and stopping just before lockout because this is the resistance profile is different on this. It's quite heavy towards the end where it's more triceps. Um, and then as you get down, it's lighter, which isn't ideal. But we're just trying to control the weight on the way down and then really feel the stretch at the bottom. I don't love doing long length partials to everything, but chest is something I think it might be okay with. Um, yeah, so, and we're just pushing through, really trying to focus on the tempo here. Te Machine incline press is one of the big exercises where I think tempo is important for me. Um, okay, so I think we're up to rep six here. Things start getting a bit difficult. As you can see, like, because it's harder at the end, I can't quite push through. And then we're just going to do a few partials, um, one partial, and then that's done. Uh, so we did seven and a half reps. I counted this as um, this time. I kind of like to go halves when I track my reps just because I find, like, it's an, a more accurate way to measure progress. Like if I'm getting like almost there and I don't get it, like I can't count it as like eight reps, but I don't want to discredit myself by saying seven. Like I'd like to get eight next time. Just makes progressive overload a little bit easier. All right, so we're here for the second set. Last time we got four and a half. You see here, I'm just waiting for the music to drop. Um, my mentality as always is just trying to beat what I got last time. So as you can see, we're just maintaining the tempo, trying to be as explosive up as we possibly can and then bringing it down slow and controlled, pausing the bottom before exploding back up again. Uh, like, I don't love this machine, as I said before, um, but it's better than the dumbbells. And especially with my, like, knee injury, I can't kick the dumbbells off. It's too hard to, like, leg drive. You can see me being a nuisance, um, getting in someone's way. Um, and then we're at the last rep there, the half rep, do a few partials, and I go to apologize, because I feel so bad. Like, I know I recorded my sets, and... Like it's good, it benefits me, but it gives me quite a lot of anxiety doing it in the gym, especially when I film everything. I'm okay if I film like one or two sets, I'm like, oh, it's not too bad. But these machines in particular, the area they're in, it's quite busy. Um, so I feel quite selfish when I do it. All right, so next up we have the plate loaded shoulder press. I prefer dumbbell. Like dumbbell just feels a lot smoother for me. I can get like an arm path I like. But um, kind of similar to like I was saying before, because of the knee surgery two months ago, I'm still recovering. I can't quite kick dumbbells up. Um, so I just have to make do with a machine. Uh, so I load up here, uh, 35 kilos is what I think. Uh, you'll see in a second. I go to push it up and I realize it's not quite right. Um, I'd only loaded 10 on the other side instead of a 15. So I have to go uh, fix it up. Something you might've noticed there as well is there was the barbell clips dropped down at the, like when I first start, what I do is with these machines, the hammer strength in particular, to get the stretch, um, you have to set yourself up in a really awkward position where like yeah, your starting point 
is really uncomfortable in your shoulders. So what I do is, as you can see here, I just put the barbell clips underneath and it makes this start easier without like sacrificing my range of motion. Um, yeah, so last time I got uh, seven at 32 and a half and I decided that was good enough. I was just gonna jump up and try to get 35. Um, so probably a bit, not fatigued, but like I spent a bit of energy, like obviously getting that first rep up. I'd hot myself up, got myself in the mental state. So I'll just take a second to get myself in there again. And there we go. As you can see, as I come down, the handles kind of come in front of you instead of saying like straight up and down. And it makes it quite difficult to like feel like you're locked in and control for the whole set. Like at the bottom, you feel like you lose you lose control of it a bit. So it's quite difficult to like really push through with this. And um, as you can see here, like I kind of had doubts. Um, I think this rep, rep in particular. Yeah, it's like I didn't think I'd get it. And I was like, no, I can. It's just the machine doesn't feel great. Um, so... And we go here, I think it's just partials. So we got seven on this. So we got the same amount of reps as we did last time, but 2.5 kilos more on each side. Um, not a bad exercise, but just not a great machine. All right. After that, we followed up with the pec deck. We are doing two sets here. Um, I've, I'm a big, not advocate, but I like to stand up when I do the pec deck. Um, it just feels better for me, but I've been sitting because I couldn't stand with the knee. Um, so this first set, we're gonna sit and you're gonna see that like it doesn't look great and to be honest, it doesn't feel great either. Um, we warmed up with uh, five reps at 61 kilos and this set we're doing 73 kilos. Last time we did 70 and we got eight and a half. So at the start, I was tucking my arms in and I like to press, push forward as if I was doing like a barbell press and then straighten my arms out at the end or at least try to. Um, same as with the machine incline press, just really focusing on the bodybuilder tempo here. Explosive up, kind of pausing for a second at the top and then controlling it slowly and way down before pausing at the bottom and feeling the stretch. Um, it might not bring you that many like extra gains like initially, but what I find is that by standardizing my my form, it makes it easier for me to progress. Like I can track like, okay, like did I actually get an extra rep or did I lose form here? Wherever I know where my form is, like I can track easier. So as you can see with these last couple of reps, like I'm not having a great time um, bringing my arms straight out the front. And that's, I just struggle with when I'm sitting down, just hopping away to the camera. So this second set, I decided that screw it, I'm gonna try and stand up. So I lower the seat and I try to straddle it a bit. As you can see, I tuck my arms in and I press forward and straighten them out. Um, this just feels a lot better for me. It works more with the lower chest as well because the handles are lower down um, and it just feels great. So last time we got seven at 70, um, we're still at 73 kilos this time and just maintain that bodybuilder tempo. Um, I don't know what it is about the standing in particular. It's just something I saw Casey Kelly and TNF post about and I thought I'll try it and because I never really connected with this exercise and it's just been absolutely great since then. Um, so we're pushing here. It's going to get a bit difficult, but we're still trying to get a full range of motion, but maintaining the tempo. We got the stretch there and then I'm still pushing through uh, probably like might have stopped normally, but I had the camera on me, so I was like, screw it. We're really gonna put on a show here. Um, and then just partials here, I think. Uh, yeah, just one partial. I didn't wanna gas myself out too much. The partials are gonna give you a lot of fatigue. So like whilst they're useful, um, like they're not the be all and end all, they're not gonna bring you an insane amount of gains. All right, next up we have the machine seated lateral raise. Uh, last time I did this, I got seven and a half at 37 kilos. So I decided to up it to 39. Um, we warmed up with five kilos at five, five reps for 25 kilos, 25 kilos for five reps. Um, I hated this machine for a long time. It never felt great. And I will admit like, it's not great for isolating your side down. It's got a lot of trap work, but I've come to love it. Um, so once again, just focusing on that bodybuilder tempo. Um, and I'm really just trying to like, essentially blast my side delts here. There's not too much to say. Um, I do find this has been the easiest lateral raise variation for me to progressive overload on. Dumbbells are like ridiculous. I try my best, but the jumps are of like 2.5 kilos per dumbbell, it's just too hard. Like I can get like, even doing like a seated, I can get like 10 at 10. Uh, we got six reps there, which is pretty good. Um, we'll keep it at 39, we're not gonna drop it. Um, just me walking over on my crutches. 
Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I've already seeded. Like, I can get, like, 10 at 10 kilos, like, pretty easily. But then if I jump up to 12.5, like, I get, like, a, like maybe five reps at really bad form. Um, and it's just, like, I can't really progress. It's quite difficult. So falling in love with this machine and getting it to work for me has been uh, quite good because it's just allowed me to, like, really focus on progressive overload with my side delts. Um, I guess I'll talk about how my, my, my motor to progress overload while we do this. Um, I think it was that rep four. And it was, no, uh, maybe it was rep five. It was rep five. We got five reps for that set. Um, and you see, we was doing partials here, just really trying to toast the side delts. I said they're like, they're not necessary, but I do enjoy doing them. Um, after this, we have one set on the machine preacher curl. I love this machine. It's my favorite bicep, uh, like just straight bicep movement. Uh, last time we got seven at 72 kilos. This time we weighed, we warmed up with five at 55. And essentially like I just try to go to town using the same tempo all the time, explosive up, pause, control down, pause. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I try to use a full range of motion because I'm trying to like, ma I'm trying to maintain my strength throughout the whole, the whole range of motion, I guess because I don't want to be getting any part weak, because that's when you get those injuries where you see the horrible bicep tears, and I really can't afford that. Like, I'm already injury-prone injury enough when it comes to my right leg. Like, you know, the hip surgeries, the knee surgeries, the braces, the injections. Like, it's just not worth it for me. Um, so my mode of progressive overload is I essentially just use rep ranges. So I love the five to eight rep range set. Um, uh, five to eight rep range. And what I do is, so my first set, I will try to fail within that rep range. If I get below five, I'll either lower the weight or keep it there if I think I can get it next time. Or if I get eight or above, I go, okay, it's time to up it next time I do this exercise. If I, if I have two sets that I'm doing, if I get eight on the first one, I maintain the the weight for the second one. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm not worried about getting eight on the second set before I progress or overload. Like I'll just go up or together next time. Uh, so here, this is my new favorite variation for the cable uh, hammer curl. I couldn't stand um, and I couldn't grab the dumbbells myself. So I was like, how can I do my hammer curls like a different variation so I'm not doing the same thing like on the machine preach curl. And I remember seeing Sam Stu like doing a bicep curl like this. I was like, oh, I wonder if I can do um, hammer curls like this. And it's great. So what you do is put the rope attachment on, you lean backwards, rest your shins against the pads where your feet go and essentially just go to town. Progressive overload isn't great because you like it's a rowing machine. The jumps are quite high, like it's seven kilos seven kilos at the start and then 10 after that like between each weight weight plate so you either have to get like little plates to put on or like the 2.5 or 1.25 kilos but i haven't really had to worry about that yet um i got 8.5 at 32 there and i got 32 last time all right so we're going for a pump check i'm looking kind of fluffy right now um if i'm being honest i'm just kind of eating like around maintenance or slight surplus just giving myself enough calories for my body to heal all right, this thing that's coming off. Oh, this is going to be ugly. Yeah, you see, a bit fluffy. There's muscle there. Um, we're, we're about 71 kilos, but we're eating enough to focus on healing my knee. Um, that's my main priority. Like, I'm still trying to build, but, like, healing is my main priority. So I'm just going to keep eating in a surplus, maintenance surplus, until I'm at a position where my knee is fully healed. And then I'm uh, I'm going to do a, a cut, an aggressive mini cut, kind of bring strip myself right down so I can go on a big uh, building phase, uh, you know, six, nine months of just like a lean bulk where I'm not gonna need to take a mini cut two, three months in because I started my bulk and I was already too fat. Um, yeah, so that's my push B done, chest, shoulders and biceps actually. I hope you learned something or I was somewhat entertaining, you got something from it. I really just did a lot of yapping. I didn't actually end up talking about my sets too much, but yeah, thank you. Happy lifting.